Hey, can I hear an amen today? Amen. Amen. Would you join us for our gathering call? If you'll do the English and uh, I started to say Alberto, but um, Arnold will come and do our Spanish today. The Sovereign Lord has given us His words of wisdom so that we may know how to comfort the weary. Morning by morning, the Lord awakens us and opens our understanding to a divine insight, the Lord's will. Mañana tras mañana, el Señor nos despierta y abre nuestro sentimiento a la percepción divina, la voluntad del Señor. You, O oh Lord, keep in perfect peace the ones whose minds are stayed on you. As your people, O oh Lord, we set our minds set on you. Keep us completely whole. Como tu pueblo, O oh Señor, ponemos nuestra mente en ti. Mantenos completamente íntegros. We prepare our minds for action and being sober-minded. We set our hope fully on the grace that will be brought to us at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Ponemos toda nuestra esperanza en la gracia que nos será traída en la revelación de Jesucristo. May God bless this reading and the hearing of the Holy Scriptures, even when we stumble and mutter and all that good stuff. Amen to that. Let's sing together. Amen. Gracious and merciful God, creator of us all, we thank you, we praise you for all that you are and all that you make it possible for us to experience and live into together, for waking us up this morning and even when we sleep and knowing indeed that you are our God no matter what happens in the world and all the emotions we hold that you still hold us as we hold each other and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Take just a moment before you're seated and say hello to somebody beside of you. Wave across the aisle in the queen wave or the king wave. If you're joining us by live stream, we're delighted to have you as well. Type in a comment and let us know you're here and joining us today as well or later in the week. <laughs> you may be seated. Again, welcome to worship with New Life Metropolitan Community Church. You heard me say it a moment ago. We say it every week. We're just regular folks who believe that God's love is for all people. If you're joining us for worship, maybe for the first time today, know we're delighted that you're here. This is a safe place and know that you are a child of God. Feel free to participate in anything that we do, not only this morning, but throughout the week. Uh, and we look forward, all of us do, to getting to know you and saying hello before the end of the day. A special treat today, all the way from Hawaii, Emily is joining us. And, and not by live stream, but in person. So, Emily, we're delighted to have you. Emily uh, served on our board, and also Joey and Emily were responsible. I like that word responsible. It means I'm not to blame. 
for, for getting us involved and engaged Norfolk and some yeah. great outreach yes. that we did. Emily, this is always home, you know this. Mm -hmm. And all the way back from Florida for the last several months. Uh, are y'all snowbirds? We didn't have any snow this year, though. So, Ginny and Elise are back home. And I, as Ginny came in, and when Emily came in, I did this. I said, I, I don't want you, you know, messing up my white stole. And so Ginny came in. She said, I don't have makeup on. And I said, oh, so it's a tan. But now, do you have tan lines? That's what we all want to know. So, we'll, we'll leave that right there. No, 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 that's fine. Because last night, there was plenty of makeup in this room last night. Yeah, it was. Last night, we had a packed house for Drag Queen King Bingo 28. Can you believe that? Mm -hmm. And a wonderful turnout and good fellowship of folks who were here. Uh, I wasn't here, of course, but I heard about all the things that were going on. And so it was great. So thank you, thank you, thank you to our king, to our queens and the king. We had, right. oh my goodness, our own. <laughs> Come on up here, Jennifer. We all know Jennifer from the announcements, but um, <laughs> the drag king that showed up last night, I'll, we'll, we'll have see more of the drag king. But hold on, I'm not through yet before you start announcing. <laughs> I have to hold her back because she's so raring to go with announcements. Yes. But I want to thank all of you who made it possible by donating prizes, all the work setting up, all the work behind the scenes, and Julie going back and forth and working out and doing troubleshooting, and, and Meg and all the other people that were there, Joey at the time. I mean, Julie at the table, Christina and, and Roger and all the volunteers that did things. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Just look around at each other and say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Jennifer. Drag King as you are. Bring us the announcements. Oh, that was my cousin last night. <laughs> yeah. He said uh, he had a good time and he was really charming the ladies is what I heard. Mm. <laughs> Oliver Muff. So, good morning, beautiful. Good morning. Good morning. So today we are having lunch after worship at AJ Gators. So if you're interested, everybody's invited, even those of you at home, please come out and join us at AJ Gators. It should be a good time. Coming up this week on Tuesday, we have our grief support meeting here at the building at 7 o'clock. This is a meeting of for anybody suffering from grief, and grief comes in many forms. Yeah. So uh, the meeting is completely confidential and private. Anything you share will be kept there. Um, and it's open to everybody. On Wednesday, we have our NLMCC Pride Fest planning. So that is a big event that we take part in in June. And if you're interested in being part of that team, please come out and join us either online or in person on May 3rd here at the building or online. We also have Meal to Go Prep Day. That's coming up on May 20th. It's going to be at 10 a.m., uh, probably at Sandra Morocco's River House in the backyard. The menu is lasagna, seasoned green beans, and cookies. If you want more information, feel free to contact Matt or Morocco. Now, coming up this weekend is uh, Lake Sharando hiking and camping in the Virginia Blue Ridge Mountains. So if you're interested, call Charles. His contact information is on the What's Happening. And we are still looking for volunteers. I know you see a lot of people volunteering. If you're interested in being part of the team, we are looking for right now a generosity team leader, a hospitality coordinator slash team leader, a worship team volunteer coordinator. Um, I think that's just the person who helps us stop from running around with our heads cut off like chickens, okay? And a worship parking team member just to help with the parking. So if you're interested, if you would like more information, you can see one of the board members. You can see myself or Joy or Julia, or Christina, or Mark. See Mark. All right. I hope y'all have a wonderful day, and I look forward to seeing you at lunch. Is my time over now? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Bye, y'all. In the middle of everything else that we do, and we had some wonderful times, and thank 
thank God that we serve a God and are created by God that allows us to experience joy and happiness and laughter and isn't a stick in the mud God. But at the same time, life sometimes happens and gets in the way. And how many times do we all feel that? Sometimes, oh my goodness, maybe life has gotten in the way and kept us or in the middle of all the joy, something that we do grieve happens. And this morning we want to take time to do a very special prayer uh, for uh, Tony and Linda and Joey Crespo as um, Tony's uh, younger brother uh, has been taking off life support, uh, maybe passing this morning. So mm-hmm. let's take just a moment uh, to just in, in a spiritual way to hold this family as God holds us. May we pray together. Gracious and merciful God, uh, you are our creator in this life and you prepare for us to be able to share with you for all eternity. And we just ask for your special presence today as we lift up uh, Billy up in Connecticut and the whole family that's there and the family that's here. And may all of you just feel God's love and our love in this moment as we claim God's presence and promises for this life and through this life to life in the whole. We come to you, O gracious God, as we place our faith and trust anew, again, lifting up this family, knowing your love and our love, and all God's people said, Amen. 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 The passage of Scripture that we have today is from the Gospel of John. And actually, it's one of my favorite Scriptures, too. And it was a Scripture, if I'm not mistaken, that... I used at my own grandfather's funeral some years back because my grandfather, I never, on that small, my dad's side of the family, uh, known as Pa. Now, I'm not Pa. You know what I am, right? I'm Grandpapa. Yeah. Uh, Maybe I am Pa, but they had a Grandpapa into the middle of all that. And I used this passage because I never saw my, my Pa in anything other than a pair of overalls. And the only time that I ever saw him in church was at my great-grandmother's funeral. But I'll tell you, I saw him at the funeral home. He had a separate pair of going to funeral, going to church pair of overalls, too. (laughs) And in my dad's side of the family, I know I'm a big disappointment because they're big into fishing. And it's not fly fishing or lake fishing. It's fishing in the mountain streams where you, you, know, you toss your line in and you know, the trout will come and bite it or not. And the only time I ever heard my dad say anything out of the way was when I was little and he took me to sane for minnows, you know, to use as, as a bait for the fish. And I'd gone back to the truck and I'd hear my dad say something, you know, out of his mouth because he fell in the creek and it was ice cold during the... Those creeks are cold up there. This passage of Scripture... The disciples, after the resurrection, now Jesus had already appeared to them twice, but sometimes when things happen, we just need to get away, don't we? Mm -hmm. Similar to this passage of Scripture where Peter said, guess what? I'm going fishing. And the other disciples, now some of them were fishermen too, but maybe not. Maybe they just needed to get away too and say, you're not without us. How many times have you said that to somebody else or somebody said that to you? I'm going with you. You're not going alone. I'm going too. Not just because you wanted to go be with them because you wanted to get away too. You had an ulterior motive too. So they're out there fishing. They fished all night. And we've heard another story like this before in the Gospels too where they fished all night and caught nothing. Jesus told them that that story to do what? Cast your nets on the other side into the deep water. And we've heard all kinds of sermons. This is, by the way, this is Sermon 1.2 already. There will be five of these before the end of the the service. Um, And so this time Jesus uh, says to them, Children, have you caught anything? Now, I don't know about you. If you come from a family of people who fish, or maybe you fish yourself, that is not what you want to say to somebody who hasn't caught anything, especially if they've been out all day and all night. Children, have you caught anything? They answered him and said, No, cast your net on the right side and you'll find some. So they did, and there were so many fish that they couldn't haul in the net. And then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It's the Lord. When Simon Peter heard it was the Lord, he wrapped his coat around himself because he was like Jeannie on the beach in Florida. He was naked. (laughs) And he jumped in the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they weren't far from the shore, only about a hundred yards. And Jesus said to them, 
Read this with me. Bring some fish that you've just caught. And when they landed, they saw a fire there with fish on it and some bread. And so Simon gets up, and you know, he's jumped in, he's covered himself up, and he helps dry, drag the net into the shore, the scripture says. Yet the net hadn't torn. It was full of large fish, 153. Then, boy, we could have a fish fry and a half. Can anybody do hush puppies? You know, you can't get good hush puppies north of Richmond. And, oh, boy, I'm, I'm hungry now, aren't you? <laughs> Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples could bring themselves to ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread, and gave it to them, and he did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus had appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. May God bless this reading and the hearing of the Holy Scriptures. Tony, can I put you on the spot in just a moment and ask you to come and give word to our prayers in just a moment? Tony and Jim, by the way, and Nick and Garrett are going not to the coronation, but they're getting there just before the coronation, and they're going over across the pond. So we'll keep them in our prayers as they go, and we'll expect souvenirs when we get back, right? Yeah. <laughs> in the midst of everything going on in life, it is the passing of this life to others, its birth. It's all this that we hold together, and no doubt we have a lot of things to hold in our hearts and minds today, some joyful things, some challenging things as we listen to the news, and my goodness, it becomes so hard to listen. You can't listen to the news all day because it just gets so depressing and everything and tragic things that have happened over the last few weeks that we can't even begin to understand why, and yet we take a time every week to take this time and gather, knowing that, excuse me, prayer is relationship. Mm -hmm. It's relationship with God and it's relationship with each other. It's a partnership, if you will. And knowing in faith that when we pray for someone else or when we pray uh, for a situation or whatever, that God, we believe God is already at work in that situation. And so sometimes it's a two-way street. God is at work in that person's life, but also in our life making us more compassionate, more understanding, more empathetic, more just able to walk the journey. It doesn't mean we're necessarily growing closer to perfection, but that we know how to navigate through whatever it is that either we have stepped in or we find ourselves in the middle of or we see someone else in the middle of all that. Let's take time just in silence as Tony comes. And Tony, I appreciate you coming and just giving words to our prayers today. Uh, it's always wonderful and appreciative to 
say some words uh, to our Savior. Um, some special prayer, you know, Jim and I and Nick and Garrett are going to uh, London, Paris. Uh, we leave tomorrow. Jim is still very sick, uh, but he, so I ask for prayer for that. He's weak, not real sick, but he's weak, so I ask prayer for that. And then, of course, many of you know me, I, I hate to fly, so I'm full of anxiety. So I'll uh, take your place. <laughs> <laughs> no, but anyway, I'm very excited. <laughs> Uh, but anyway, um, uh, it's, it's so wonderful to have this opportunity. And dear Heavenly Creator, we, we love you and we trust you. And, and sometimes we just don't understand about things. But we have to trust you. And that's why we're here in this church today. Because we know that regardless of what happens in this life, that you're with us and you will be with us even to the end of our times. But the funny thing about that is we don't have an end time. It may be ended here, but God, we praise you and we, we look forward to be with you eternally. And we thank you for that. And God, I, I thank you for the many people that I know here that I want to be a part of. And I thank you for this church. I've grown up in this church. I came as a young man and now I'm a very mature man. And God, I thank you for that. And oftentimes this church is what built me in a, in a way that I know that God is real. And God would never leave us. So, dear Heavenly Creator, our Father, our Mother, our Comforter, we thank you for all the things that you do for us. We thank you for this church and this church that guides us in a way that make us who we are, people of God, people to do the right things for you and for this community. We ask you to be with us for now and forevermore. We pray this in our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.
Yesterday morning, or yesterday afternoon, I was down at uh, Waterside mm -hmm. to participate in an event that was organized um, by some folks in our community who represent some in the drag community. And this week someone asked me, is drag a community? And I said, yes, it mm -hmm. is. And we're all over the place. Mm -hmm. Some folks are cisgendered, gay, straight, trans, all over the place and how we do that. The kids up at, I won't say kids, the students at Mulligan um, University or College in Johnson City, Tennessee, just over the hill from where I'm from, have a billboard up there today that says, um, drag is holy. It says trans is holy. It says queer is holy. And it says, you are holy. All right. All right. That'll preach. Mm -hmm. And so no matter how we self-identify across the LGBTQAI plus elemental P alphabet of whatever's there, somebody said recently to me, well, when I came out, there was only gay or, or straight or lesbian and straight. Now we have all these different labels. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it's, it's beautiful, the beautiful discovery and how God unfolds how we're created in so many ways is that God is working. And so the partnerships that we have and you know the folks that organized this event yesterday I hadn't heard of, and that's okay. And there's so many different, we don't need to be cliquish in our communities. I don't care who we are. And the opportunity to be present with, last night we were present with a lot of people. We still see at our DQKB, we still see 40 to 60% of folks that we've never seen before coming in. And a whole lot of straight folks coming in, too. And so, so the community's coming in here, but you hear me say this a lot. It's not just about being here in-house, but it's about where? Being out-house as well. And sometimes that can be messy. Out-house, all puns intended on that if you didn't get it. If somebody's asleep, punch them and say, the preacher's pretty funny today. Go ahead and punch somebody and say, the preacher's pretty funny today. Yeah. 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 I didn't hear an amen on that one at all, so, all right. But our partnerships are important, and last night at Bingo, we had the executive director of the LGBT Life Center and the number two person in the LGBT Life Center here in our Meals to Go program that uh, is so very important. We've prepared over 40,000 meals, uh, and in many ways, we continue to partner with them. The 50-plus thriving group uh, was here this past week. Uh, and some of you were here for that. And so there are a number of ways that we partner in the community to make a difference and to be present. Pride Fest coming up, my goodness. We're going to need lots of button makers because last year we had, for the first time, we had lines coming into our tent. And I think, wow, my favorite thing to do during that. And thanks to uh, several folks who were, who were there. Joey was out there and some other folks were dragging people in. Rodney was out there and all the people were handing out stuff. And when they would come in, I said, have you heard about New Life Metropolitan Community Church? And, and if they said no, I said, well, they tell me that the pastor is gay. <laughs> and, and they look really funny when I say that. I said, hi, I'm the pastor. And then they said, all right. <laughs> Being able to be present because we are in so many ways, our whole community feels like it's under attack. Mm -hmm. If you look at all the statistics of all the things and, you know, the Outside visitors is what we call them when they show up here. But we're not going to be pushed into a way that hides who we are. We're not going to be ashamed of who we are. Mm -hmm. And we're going to continue to have a voice for justice and love because the God and the other churches that condemn and stir other people up to acts of violence and hatred, I don't know that God. I don't know about you. This is Sermon 2.5 when we get to this point. I don't know about you, but I know a God of love and of justice and of mercy and of compassion and of equity and equality. And that's the partnership with God and the partnership with each other that we have. And so now we come to the offer, and you wondered where I was going to get to that, is that that helps us to be in present and do that. So thank you, thank you, thank you always for being generous, not only of yourselves, but as we get ready to do this, it's not just about money, it's being present like you were last night, like we will have opportunities to be with Mills to Go and out in the community to make a difference in someone else's life as someone else through God's love has made an ours. Can I hear an amen to that? Amen. I invite you to give as God's Spirit leads you to give. We don't pass the offering plates, but you can get up and put something in the offering plate at any time. 
Uh, if you're online or even here today, you can go to our website, newlifemcc.net, click on the giving tab, and a little tab will drop down. You can give that way. Put something in the mailbox or in the mailbox in the front of the church. But thank you for your compassion. Thank you for responding to God's call to be at work together in partnership together as we make a difference in Christ's name and in Christ's spirit. I invite you to give as God's spirit leads you to give today. Would please rise and join us in singing the doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Praise God above the heavenly host. Praise Creator, Son, and Holy Ghost. Please, give, please allow us to use these gifts to give you glory in everything that we do. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Mm. After that song and Tony's prayer, would you please rise for the benediction? Oh, sit down. <clears throat> you think I'm not going to preach after that prayer and that song? Oh, wow. Thank you for that. You know, it may surprise you to hear some preacher type say that during worship, it's hard for us to worship personally because wrapped around everything that's happening coming next. But today, I feel like I have worshiped. So thank you for that. It's all right, Isaac. Come on down. <laughs> All right, you've already heard the word mentioned a few times today, <coughs> partner. We use that word a lot, don't we? It can be used as a noun, 
It can be used as a verb. Some of you grew up in a, and some of you still look like your cowboys and girls. How would you finish the phrase? Howdy, partner. partner. You got to say it right. Who said that? Chris said it. Howdy, what? Partner. You got to say it right, right. This is in our community, we might say, or anybody might say, this is my partner. We might say, will you partner with me to do something? But what do we mean when we say partner? What does that mean to you in your relationships overall? And it can be a whole lot of things, can it? I mean, we can have a lab partner. We can be in a domestic partnership. We can, what else? Dance partner. Oh, wow. Why did, how did I even forget that one? Yeah. yeah. Partner with another church. Partner with another church. Okay, but for you personally, what, does, what would you say? Par oh, partner in crime. Huh? Where did that one come from? Uh-huh. Actually, there is some scripture about that in the Old Testament. I'll have to look that up. Partner in crime. This indeed is the bad side today. You all were the good side. If you all need to switch sides, please feel free to do that now. Some of the words and synonyms for partner that some folks have suggested, this is almost like family feud, isn't it? Associate, colleague, companion, friend, wife, husband, accomplice, assistant, buddy, chum, cohort, comrade, consort, like the queen, I guess, helper, helpmate, uh, pal, sidekick, teammate, coworker, all over the place. And so we use that word in a lot of different ways and a lot of different times in so many ways. Now, I sort of did some research, and you know, I have some great research assistants, Siri and Google and Alexa. And you can Google this too, and it was amazing to me to see the articles that popped up. And one that popped up said, why do I say partner instead of boyfriend or girlfriend? And one person had written the comments on that was, well, I do that so that my friends in the LGBTQAI plus community will feel safe around me Amen. and not use gender-specific wording. I like that. Doesn't hurt anyone, this person also said. And somebody else on another article said the difference, now here, some of you are just going to have to fess up on this, the difference between a partner and a lover Mmm, that sounds like a juicy romance novel, doesn't it? Someone wrote this in that article that, in short, there are people, a lover, someone with whom we experience the biochemical high. Some of you know about that, bi that biochemical stuff, I know. High we love. But that does not mean they're automatically somebody with whom you should spend your life. Just ask the expert divorce solicitors. Partners can be lovers, but they are in general much more than that. A partner is somebody who's aligned with you and wants to achieve your goals in life just as much as they want to achieve theirs. Partners go out of their way to support you in whatever capacity that you require and expect you to do the same for them in areas of expertise. And if you look at the definition of partner, it's a shared experience. It's being in the presence and sharing that experience, and we'll talk more about the responsibility. But when we think about Jesus, do we think about Jesus as a partner? What are the terms we use for Jesus? What? Son of God. All right, now you all went to sleep in this Sunday school lesson, I can tell. I know what wakes you up. You talk about lovers, you wake up. <laughs> talk about Jesus. All right. Jesus is both human and divine. The promised, oh boy, we got a remedial bunch here. The promised Messiah, Savior, Lord of Lords, King of Kings. But Jesus said, I no longer call you servants, I call you friends. There's a song out there called Friend of God. But you know what hits me about that is we think, oh, well, Jesus is, is, is our friend. 
Jesus is calling us friends, but the question is, do we call Jesus friend? How many times has somebody called you a friend and you weren't sure you wanted to call them friend or not? You want to keep a distance on that. So it doesn't automatically equate to how we feel, does it? So back to this question, how do we see Jesus? Now there's this idea of biblical partnership. You can go back in the Old Testament and the New Testament. And one author who studies all the Greek and Hebrew, you know, I'm, I'm not that good with mine, especially my North Carolina accent pronouncing some of these words. But there is a word that, it's a church word, so I don't expect, knowing how, knowing how the test you've already failed for the Sunday school questions I've asked you today, I'm not expecting. The, now, all right, this is a chance for the bad side to redeem yourselves. There is, don't look at you. Okay. There is a word that is used in churches that means fellowship. Do you know what it is? Okay, let's go. Let's try the good side over here. Close, Ken. Rich. I mean, Rich. <laughs> Close. Koinonia. Have you ever heard that word, koinonia? You've heard, come by here, kumbaya. <clears throat> but the interesting, <clears throat> excuse me, the interesting thing about, <clears throat> Mylene gave me something last night. I can't hardly talk. So <clears throat> my, cous my cousin, Mylene, for those of you who don't know, my cousin Mylene was here last night. She's in partnership with us. Is that this word can be translated to also mean partnership. So fellowship is what? Being in community with each other and sharing. And it can be a recipro reciprocal kind of thing. It's not just a one-way street. It's us being able to give and to receive and to be able to share together. And sometimes we feel more comfortable doing that. And sometimes it takes time getting to know someone before we're comfortable with that. You have to build that trust to know that this person is about your good and not wanting to harm us, especially in the environment we live in today. Sometimes we don't even know that about our neighbors, do we? And that's almost scary. It's almost sad in a way that we're there that we how feel like that we're challenged to be able to step into whatever word you want to call it, whether it's koinonia or fellowship or partnership with each other and with God in a way that we can share in that point. I describe God's spirit as we're created. And, I, you know, I'm going to date myself, although I think it was Ken that shared this with me. I didn't see it personally. <laughs> Uh, remember the show Hee Haw? You, 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 I don't remember. It was before my time. Uh, but there was an old guy on there. He said he had a letter right here close to his heart, 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 and he couldn't find it. You know, where is your heart? We don't really know. I mean, we think about our soul. I think about our soul. You know, we can't find the heart, but sometimes we can't find our soul either, especially as we talk about reef newing and reclaiming and saving the soul of our nation. We hear that bounced around a lot. Where is our soul? I think our soul is where God's spirit meets our spirit. And you've heard me say this many times. I love to go back up to Quantico and, and the main entrance to the Marine base. Be still my heart. And it says the crossroads of the Marine Corps. Wow. Wow, wow. But to think about even more wow than all those hot Marines to think about God's spirit and my spirit or your spirit and God's spirit having a crossroads together, that's wow. Say it with me. Wow. wow. Say it loud enough to wake up your neighbor. Wow. 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 I know some of you went to the club after you left here last night. Yeah. So let's get back to this story of Jesus and the fish. They had fished all night. They didn't catch anything. Jesus said, Cat on the other side, Peter's naked as a jaybird. Put something around him. I mean, when you've seen it, you've seen it, right? I mean, uh, too late now. That's right. Jumps in the water, comes on, and Jesus already has some fish on the, the fire. Now, I said something about this last week. That we were going to get to this story. I've often wondered how Jesus got the fish that Jesus already had on the fire. Did Jesus, now, I love the image in the New Testament of how Jesus fishes. Jesus doesn't fish with a hook. 
it's all about net fishing, isn't it? Because it's not about hooking someone with some, you know, ploy or whatever, or ulterior motive or something. It's with a net because God is interested in the whole person. We talk about holiness, but we talk about God trying and, and giving us what we need to walk this journey together. You know I'm going to say this at some point, maybe two or three times during the sermon. This is one thing. Don't get my room ready yet if I repeat this story in the things. Because if I tell something two or three weeks from now in the same story, that's okay. But if it's in the same sermon, you know, get my room ready. Um, if you step into it, it's not that you don't step into it. It's what? It's how you step out of it. And I think that is so important. God's Spirit gives us in the wholeness of that we're called to live into the ability. And maybe we don't even step into it ourselves. Maybe we just find ourselves in a mess. How many times have you woken up and think, I didn't cause this mess, but how in the world did I get myself in a situation I either got to help somebody else or how am I going to get out of this? So as we think about all of that, but now let's get back to the story. So however Jesus got his fish with a net or said to those fish, Get up here and they all just hop up on the, the, the... I don't know if that happened or not. But he says to them, bring some of the fish that you have caught. Now sometimes I think we have this impression of God's blessings is that we're just waiting for God to bless us. Bless me, Lord. I'm right here. Bless me. Put your hands up and say, bless me. Y'all do anything I asked you to do. That, that worries me. Within reason. Within reason, yeah. <laughs> but do you ever find yourself doing that and saying, well, why hasn't God blessed me? Look over here. They're driving a Mercedes. I would like to have my BMW back, but anyway. Bless me. But our relationship with God and with each other isn't dependent on just being blessed all the time, is it? Because sometimes on the way and sometimes being a blessing to someone else helps bless ourselves in some ways, does it not? But I think this message, this simple phrase of bring some of the fish that you have caught should have a message in it for me and for you too. Because it says to us we're being invited by Jesus to partner with Jesus. I'm not just going to give you the fish that I cooked. I want you to bring something good. Now, if, you, if I know how you cook, Tony, uh, if you go to Tony and Jim's, make sure that Jim is cooked, not Tony, right? That, I, I'm, not, I'm not picking on Tony. That's just common knowledge, right? Tony, that's why Tony's always first in line when we get ready to eat. So, but Jesus is saying, I want you to bring something to the table too. Now, wow, that makes us take a step back. Because if you're like me, I, I might go to Kroger and buy a watermelon. I might go to Kroger and buy some rolls or some Diet Pepsi, but I haven't cooked it. I bought it. We like to take the easy way out sometimes. I'll fess up to that. I mean, yeah, we're busy in life, and boy, the way I've seen y'all eat the watermelon and the rolls and the Diet Pepsi that I brought, nobody complains. Or you pick up, pick up a bucket of chicken. That's even, oh boy, that's pigs at the trough. We'll gnaw the bone when somebody brings some chicken. Mm-hmm. But when we have to put effort into it to partner with God, you know, how many of you have seen the movie Sorted Lives or The Sorted Wedding? Yes. And, and Leslie Jordan played a character in, in both of them as Brother Boy, as a, a cross-dressing, however, Brother Boy self-identified, queer or whatever, and has been put by his family in a mental institution because and loves to say, was it Tammy Wynette? I think he loves to imitate and sing and do drag with. And so he's seeing a psychologist, and the psychologist has asked him, and I'll try to do this in polite terms, the psychologist has asked him to, to fantasize uh, about a woman. And uh, so when he comes back in, all dressed in drag, and uh, so she's, Dr. Eve says, well, well, Earl, did you, did you do what I asked you to do? And he said, well, Dr. Eves, I tried. But it was hard. And you just won't let me fantasize about some manly woman like Miss Jane Hathaway. <laughs> and, 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 and so at the end, the conversation, if you haven't seen the movie, go watch the movie because it's much better than what I'm describing it. But in the movie, the classic line that Brother Boy says, I refuse to participate in my own recovery. 
because of all the many ways. And in recent weeks, I've had conversations with therapists as we have partnered with folks on base at Little Creek and in other places and in the community that if we make a referral to somebody in the community, we have a responsibility both in the military and out of the military to make sure if, whether it's about sexual harassment or rape or suicide or whatever, that we're not going to refer somebody else to someone else who's going to cause more harm and trauma to that person. And that's especially true from our LGBT community. And I love the, the person that was facilitating that group when she said, and challenged someone from the Virginia Beach Police Department. He said, I, I don't need to know about a person's identity. And the person said, yes, you do. You need to know the context because you have a responsibility to make sure you're not referring to someone who's going to cause more harm. Yeah. And we in our community, you also need to signal that you're a safe person for that person to come out to because if we don't feel you're safe, we're not going to come out and we're not going to share. So there's that trust and that buildup that's there in partnership. So let's get back to the story about our fish. What fish do you and I bring to put on the table? And I'm not just talking about money. I'm talking about everything that we are and that we discover about how God has created you and I in the beautiful way. You know, I get up in the morning, and I know I'm purty. <laughs> but I ain't so purty when I look in the mirror. And I turn the lights down. Because I can't stand to look at myself that early in the morning until I've had my... I don't, I don't drink coffee, you know, but I want my shower. And I think that's how it is. If we think of, of God's love as light, sometimes we're afraid of the light because the light sees us in all of our wrinkles and in our jackets that won't button up all the time. And, you know, we have been living in a culture that body shames and spiritually shames and does all kinds of shame. And yet we're being called to bring some of the fish of who we are into this partnership with God. I don't know about you, but I am humbled by the fact that God not only created us in such wonderful, unique ways that we're living into but that God still loves you and me enough to want us to be involved in this plan. This, whatever plan it is, God's got plans for me and you to be able to make a difference in our lives and someone else's life. I don't know, but that humbles me. And, you know, we hear evangelicals now. You've already, you know, I, we're not going to shame anybody for not being part of Sunday school. Because we come in metropolitan community churches, we come from all kinds of different faith backgrounds, do we not? We come from no church backgrounds, do we not? Somebody said, what did you find exciting about coming from being Baptist? I'll have to admit, you know, that was my former denomination to MCC. And what scared me most wasn't the preaching part, but was about communion. Because I didn't really know how to do high church communion because our communion liturgy is very close to high church. But the wonderful, beautiful thing that I can't do as an MCC pastor, and you hear me say this a lot, I can never turn somebody away from this table of grace, this table of community, this table of thanksgiving. Amen. And it's about allowing us to come in our imperfections as we are to be able to share God's love. So I don't care how you feel like you look in the mirror God's light turned on you makes you a lovely, wonderful person. Can I hear an amen to that? Amen. Now, we grew up, some of those of us who grew up in churches have heard these things about Jesus coming into our heart, right? Take Jesus, I, I take Jesus as my Savior. You take, say it with me, you take him too. Some of you maybe didn't know that song. That's a campfire song that we used to sing. And there was emphasis on this. And the little boy had heard this all of his life in this story. I don't know if it's true or not, but it makes the example I'm about to make. It, the little boy had been told that Jesus lives in his heart. All his, and he, he has a heart condition. He's going to have to have surgery. And he tells the doctor, I'm told that, you know, when you cut my heart open, you're going to find Jesus. Because wow. he thought Jesus lived in his heart. But someone wrote something that I thought was interesting because as I go back to Brother Boy's comment about not wanting to participate in his own recovery, when we hear that word responsible, we don't want to participate in our own recovery either because it makes us responsible. And, and this person wrote this, Jesus didn't ask to be led into people's hearts. He told them to follow him, dedicating his life to the most vulnerable in society. 
Following Jesus was a call to private piety disconnected from society. Following Jesus was a relational, social, and involved in justice. Wow. If that doesn't challenge us. And we're going to sing that song, Jesus came into my heart. I'm so glad Jesus came into my heart. But it's not just about bringing Jesus into your heart. It's allowing the love of God to transform us in a way that we never thought was possible that makes more of a difference for us to discover not only who we are, but to say, you know, we need to give other people the freedom to do that. And when we see other people oppressed and discriminated against and hateful acts against our neighbors, we need to be there in partnership with them in this community. Can I hear an amen to that? Amen. You know, sometimes the image of, the, of partnership in the New Testament, <clears throat> excuse me, talks about in very heteronormative terms the church as the bride of Christ. But the way sometimes the church has nurtured us, I'm worried that the church isn't, the model that's being used isn't the church as the bride of Christ. And I think there was a movie, and I, you know, I hate horror movies, but the church is the bride of Chucky. <laughs> Because if the church isn't doing it, and it's a wonderful example of before Paul became Paul, Paul was Saul and was a, a Pharisee and was involved in persecuting the folks who were followers of Jesus. And at the st stoning of Stephen, Saul is present. doesn't tell us that Saul ever picked up a stone and tossed it at Stephen, but it says that those who did laid their coats at Saul's feet. We have to hold accountable not only those who are throwing the stones and perpetrating violence, we have to hold accountable those who hold the coats and stir up those right. who do as well. Can I hear an amen, amen. to that? Yeah. I want to close with something, the words of Richard Rohr, who passed away this past year from his writing called Falling Upward, a spirituality <clears throat> excuse me, for the two halves of life. All we can give back and all God wants from, us, from any of us is to humbly and proudly return the product that we have been given, which is ourselves. If I am to believe the saints and the mystics, this finished product is more valuable to God than it is seemingly to us. Whatever this mystery is, we are definitely in on the deal. True religion is always a deep intuition that we are already participating in something very good in spite of our best efforts to deny it or to avoid it. In fact, the best of modern theology is revealing a strong turn upward participation as opposed to religion as mere observation, affirmation, moralism, or group belonging. There is nothing to join, only something to recognize, suffer, and enjoy as a participant. You are already in the eternal flow that Christians would call the divine life of the Trinity. God as Creator, God as our Messiah, as our Savior, God as the Holy Spirit that communes with my spirit and your spirit in that crossroads of our life that gives us the zest of life when we just want to give up and go to sleep and, and die. But God's Spirit says in this old cliche, I still like it today, God ain't through with me yet. Me yet. Yeah. It's easy to say God ain't, ain't through with you yet. But it's sometimes more difficult to say, God ain't through with me because that means i got to step up to the plate. Even if I've stepped in something, it's not what you stepped in, it's what? How you step out of it. The Lord is with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks and praise. It is right indeed, O Lord, to give you thanks and praise. And so we lift our voices with all the saints and angels and proclaim your glory in unending praise as we praise together saying, Most gracious and merciful God, as we come humbly to this table of grace, this table of community, this table of thanksgiving, we know that it is your spirit that not only meets us here, but that goes with us wherever we are. We claim your promises and your presence today, perhaps more so than at any time of our lives. 
because we find it difficult as we come to this table to let go and to not worry about everything that's going on around us. And so we come to this table asking that your partnership with us and our partnership with you might be made stronger in love and in hope and in peace and in joy, that our lives might be made better and that we might share that love and light with others to do the same. It's in your holy and precious name and we ask that you pour out your spirit upon these gifts on this table, the gifts that we hold in our hand, the gifts that others may hold wherever they are today or later in the week. We thank you and praise you for all that you are and all that you make it possible for us to be and live into. Draw us closer to you, closer to each other, and to those we've yet to meet. And all God's children said, Amen. Amen. Jesus took the bread from the Passover table and blessed it and broke it and said, This is my covenant. It is my body with you. It is opened to you. As often as you receive it, you receive me. In the same way, he took a cup from the table and poured it and blessed it and said, This is the new covenant. It is for love. It is for grace. It is mercy. It is forgiveness. All wrapped into one. You don't have to work to be better to receive it. You just got to realize that I love you enough to give to you is how I would paraphrase it. All right, then. And it is for you and you and you and you and you and you and you. I don't know about you, but when I think about it, it's easy, so easier for, somebody to, for me to say to somebody else it's for you than to truly realize that it's for me. Because that means i got to realize a whole lot of things about myself. But to know and to hear God's voice whispering in our ears, in our hearts, to the depth of our soul, where God's Spirit is touching us, that God has already given us that forgiveness. We just have to receive it, accept it, and sometimes we're called on to share it. Because sometimes it's hard for us. We can receive forgiveness, but boy, we'll stand back when we got to forgive somebody. We're going to make somebody else work for it to get our forgiveness. God doesn't do that for us. May we be as generous to ourselves and to others as God is to us. In that regard, pick out one or two people. Now, don't make them. Don't point your finger at them. Look gently with your eyes and with your voice. Say, God's love is for you. Don't punch each other when I saw a couple of you do that to your partners out there too and say, hmm, God's love is not conditional in that regard. Now I want you to go all generic and say, it's for all y'all. It's for all y'all. It's for you and you It's for mama and them. Mama and them. And whoever else that you think is not worthy of God's love in your eyes because everyone is welcome at this table today. We proclaim the great miracle and mystery of our faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ shall come again. Hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, children of God, all of you, you don't have to be a member of this church or of any other church to share in this communion today. If you didn't receive one of the individual communion packages, if you'll raise your hand, Jennifer will bring you one. If you're at home today, joining us by live stream, go and get a cookie or a cracker, a cup of juice, cup of wine, it doesn't matter what. Or if you're joining us later in the week, I still believe that God's Spirit still connects us all. The choir's going to come and sing and share, and then we will share together as the body of Christ. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord. Praise His name. Proclaim His salvation day after day. Declare His glory among all nations, His marvelous deeds among all people. Fill me, Jesus. Fill me now. Fill me, Jesus, with Thy precious holy power. I am Oh. 
May we share together the body of Christ. A cup of grace and love and mercy and forgiveness and salvation. I invite you to rise as you're able and as you feel comfortable as we sing the prayer that our Lord taught us to pray. this week when you feel like you need to be held up or maybe you're offering a hand up to hold somebody else up beside of you. Look around this room and I want you to say to somebody else or everybody, you're beautiful. You're beautiful. And now you may be seated for our closing song today. <laughs> And now you may rise for the benediction. <laughs>
You know, I mentioned that old hee-haw story earlier, and I was thinking about the old guy who couldn't find his heart. Maybe there's rhyme and reason to that. Because just as Jesus fishes with a net, not with a hook, our heart's all over us. And all that we feel, and the renewing of our mind to the depth of our soul. Go now today knowing that you are a beloved child of God and that nothing, absolutely nothing, can take God's love away from you. And as we partner with God and each other, that God is not only behind us, beside of us, but ahead of us in this journey. Go now in the grace and mercy and peace of Almighty God. God bless you, my friends, and thank you for being here. Jesus.